also has the MetaTrader platform. Deutsche Bank is a leading European bank that now also offers Forex trading. Interactive brokers. A lot of professional Forex traders prefer this broker. The subject of Forex brokers is continually being discussed in our community and we will continue to provide more information on which brokers are currently preferred. But this will give you some good choices to start out with. The brokers all have a free download of their trading platform and they all have instructions and manuals on how to use the trading platforms. They even have live customer service online and most of them even have a telephone number. Isn't it interesting that I should even have to say that most of them, there are some brokers that don't have a phone number you can call customer service? Well, for the most part, all brokers have plenty of customer service available and you should really make use of it. Not ask questions to other traders about how to use a trading platform or how Forex trading accounts work. Get all of that done in your homework with your broker. So therefore we won't discuss how to install trading platform software or how to execute a trade on your trading platform. How do you enter a trade on your trading platform? I don't know. Open an account and find out through your broker how to do that. Brokers are here to help you with all your needs and questions with regard to these things. So open a demo account, install the trading platform software and make a trade. Make many trades. If you're afraid to enter a trade in your demo account, how will you trade in your live account? As I said earlier, learn to trade in a demo account and then open a live account. If you do that, then theoretically it won't be possible for you to lose your live account. Many of us have the need to go to a live account sooner before we actually learn how to trade in order to experience learning to trade in a live account. And if you do this, just consider the capital that you use to be part of your tuition for your education and don't even necessarily plan that you would give up after losing one account this is your tuition if you decide to do this place no limit on how many accounts you would lose if you're going to start trading live before you learn how to trade many traders who are now extremely successful have lost several demo accounts and many have lost several live accounts. Learning any new skill requires time and practice. So what is your plan for getting the practice that you need to succeed in trading? At this point you may or may not even know what charts are and you may have no idea what constitutes a valid entry signal for a trade or a valid exit signal. Don't let that stop you from trading in a demo account just open your trading platform choose a currency pair and flip a coin heads you buy tails you sell see what happens this is important to experience observe what happens in your account if this will be your chosen business you'll want to be proficient in the mechanics of making a trade you should spend time learning how to trade unsuccessfully then consider learning how to trade successfully. Next, we will look at how to start to learn the art and science of identifying ideal trading opportunities using technical analysis. Fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is the study of the core underlying principles that affect the economy of a particular country or currency. This method attempts to predict the action of price by analyzing current government policy, economic data, and factors in society. Although there is a lot of value in analyzing markets using fundamental information, many traders find that it is impractical. For one reason, it could be a full-time job for entire teams of analysts to come to any conclusions about the direction of the market. Another reason that many traders put more emphasis on technical analysis is because fundamental analysts are often completely wrong about the direction of the market. Some experts, including George Soros, have put forth the theory that markets don't really move based on the fundamentals that should drive them. 
it's really people's beliefs about the fundamentals that drive the market and not the actual fundamentals. Furthermore, it has been observed that technical analysis can be very reliable for determining the direction to trade and even the precise price zone where the market will turn next. Fundamental analysis would have no clue about these things but can only deal in large general tendencies of market movement. Here's a weekly chart of the euro versus the US dollar and this vertical red line is December the 30th 2004 and the euro versus the US dollar had been going up for quite a while. For at least two or three years before this time it had been going up and if you go back to 2004 December that month and search a lot of financial magazines, newspapers, see if you can find some articles on the US dollar and the economy and you'll see that at that time all the experts were saying that the outlook for the US dollar was extremely gloomy for the coming year and that was right at the top of the euro versus the US dollar and for the entire next year the dollar gained in strength so how would you use that information that you get from all these experts who are saying that the outlook for the dollar was gloomy for the next year when in fact the outlook was good even economic experts tend to follow the herd they tend to be bullish at the top of the market and bearish at the bottom of the market and that is the opposite of what a successful trader must do these people all the economic experts at that time believed the economic fundamental evidence fully indicated an immediate future direction for this pair and they were consistently wrong and these are the economic experts meanwhile a few technical traders saw a clear pattern that enabled them to trade profitably during this entire time the point here is that although fundamental sources of news can contribute to your ability to trade successfully you must always believe what you see and that refers to believing what you see on your charts a good deal of the field of technical analysis involves simply observing what the market is in the process of doing not predicting what it will do in the future a good deal of the field of technical analysis involves simply observing what the market is in the process of doing not predicting what it will do in the future necessarily if the market is in the process of unfolding according to a recognizable pattern then it is possible to predict that the pattern will continue to unfold thereby enabling us to predict price targets and the direction of price as well as the time when price will reach a target. Technical analysis involves looking at data as it is displayed on charts. Therefore, you need to get charts and start using them. At your earliest convenience, you should purchase a subscription to professional forex trading charts or open an account with a broker that includes free professional charts such as MetaTrader you can start right away using free charts and fortunately there is one type of free charts that is quite professional and robust in its capabilities these charts you've probably heard of are called MetaTrader and the current version at the time this course is being produced is MetaTrader 4 and I've just received news that MetaTrader 5 is about to be released at this time unfortunately I have not seen that they are available as a standalone product they are being used as a marketing tool for brokers and are attached to the brokers trading accounts here are some brokers that provide access to MetaTrader MIG FX, FXDD, FXCM, Alpari FX and dozens of other brokers have MetaTrader available here are some professional charting programs that you might wish to use instead of or in addition to MetaTrader eSignal, Metastock, FXTrek IntelliCharts, Dynamic Traders Charts, or the Dynamic Traders software. Next step, homework assignment, get charts. 
The two primary ways of displaying data on a chart are bar charts and candlestick charts. There are some other types of charts such as the line chart. Most traders agree that candlestick charts are the easiest to read and most revealing of market information. Some old timers who have traded on bar charts for years feel that bar charts are easier to read primarily because that's what they are accustomed to. A bar chart shows the opening price on the left side of the bar as this little tab sticking out of the bar because time is going from left to right so we enter this period of time with this opening price and we exit this period of time with the closing price as this tab on the right side. Bar charts display the price in the form of bars. Each bar represents a unit of time. For instance, if you are looking at the five minute time frame, each bar would represent five minutes of time and time is going from left to right on your chart. If you're looking at the one hour time frame, each bar is one hour or on the daily time frame, each one of these bars would represent one day of time. Since time is going from left to right, the opening price during that period of time is represented by this tab on the left side. So that's the opening price during that period of time, during that five minutes or that one hour or that day, the price may have gone down to this low. The price may have gone up to this high at some point during that period of time. And at the close of that period of time, this was the price where this tab is sticking out to the right. So this represents a bull bar. That is, in trading, of course, bullish means the market is going up. Bearish means the market is going down. And during that period of time, the market closed higher than where it opened. A bear bar is the same, but the opening price is higher than the closing price. The idea of changing the colors of bars is borrowed from candlestick charts. It makes them a little bit easier to read than if they were all black and white or one color. So you can immediately see at a glance that these bars represent periods of time where the price was closing lower than where it opened. A candlestick chart is a little bit different. The body of the candle is represented as a rectangle. The opening price is the bottom of the candle if it is a bull candle and it has the corresponding color. The color of a bull candle may be blue or green or some other color. A candle shows you the same thing as a bar. That is that the price opened at the bottom of the body of this candle. It closed at the top of the body of this candle. And during this period of time, it went down to this low and it went up to this high. And for instance, if it closed at the high, there wouldn't be this what we call a wick on the top of the candle. A bear candle, usually red in color, shows you that the opening price was the top of the body of the candle and the close was the bottom of the body of the candle. And if there are wicks, sometimes the bottom wick is also called a tail, wick and tail of a candle shows you that the price went up to this high during that period of time, went down to this low during that period of time, but this was the open, the top of the body. This was the close at the bottom of the body. And a good way for you to get a better understanding of how this works is to open your charts and look at a one minute time frame and zoom in and, and blow the candles up in size. Zoom in until the candles are very large and just watch them form. You will see exactly how candles form when you're watching it in real time on the one minute time frame. In Japanese candlestick terminology, a doji is a candle in which the closing price is equal to or very close to the opening price. This makes for a very thin body of the candle because the opening price and the closing price were right at the same point. And the price may have gone up or down to this high and this low. 
but you can see that a doji might also just be a straight line if the price never moved. This candle represents indecision and the market is not going up or down. Another important candlestick known in Japanese candlestick terminology is the hammer. This is a candle in which the closing price was close to the top of the candle and the opening price was also close to the top. That means that the price opened, it may have gone down during this period of time, but it ended up closing up toward the high. You might see this type of candle at the bottom of a reversal when the price is going down. This shows the period of time in which the price did reverse. It was going down and then it ended up closing toward the top. The inverse of that is the shooting star or inverted hammer you might see this type of candle at the top of price when there is a reversal from going up to down. This shows that during this period of time the price was going up but it ended up closing down in this case below the opening price. Both of these candles may be either color as long as the close was near the opening price. So in the case of a hammer if the color of the candle is blue then it's even more of an indication that price is closing above the opening and it's more of an indication that the price is changing directions from down to up. The same with the inverted hammer. If the color of the candle is red, then it's even a stronger signal. If this was a blue colored candle, it would still be a signal that price the inverted hammer, if the color of the candle is red, then it's even a stronger signal. If this was a blue colored candle, it would still be a signal that price was going down and it reversed. That price was going up and it reversed but because it closed near the open. But if it closed below the opening price, it's an even stronger signal. Here's a hammer in the context of some price action, showing that during this period of time, price went down. This was the unit the period of time in which it really reversed and then it started going back up. The shooting star. Here's a chart that shows a period of time when price may have been going up previously and then during this period of time it reversed and closed back down forming something very close to what is a shooting star and it doesn't have to be perfect. Railroad tracks. This is a candlestick formation that you may hear talked about in Forex trading and it's not actually uh, an official Japanese candlestick term. That's where there are two long bodied candles of opposite color. It shows a dramatic reversal in price. The price was going down very strong and in, then it hit a barrier of some kind and immediately started to go back up. The two long bodied candles of opposite color help to illustrate that. So the railroad tracks could be defined as two long bodied candles of opposite color and it is a very important formation that you will see frequently on your charts that's not found in candlestick books. It may be considered a type of bearish or bullish engulfing pattern which is another term that you'll see in the candlestick books but it's a more specific type. Sometimes you'll hear traders refer to this as a tweezers top or tweezers bottom. A tweezers top or tweezers bottom may actually contain a doji. So it is a different thing entirely from the railroad tracks which is two long bodied candles of opposite color. A tweezers top is where there are two candles with the same high in a pattern that was going up. A tweezers bottom is two candles with the same low in a pattern that was going down. So this is an example of railroad tracks, two long bodied candles of opposite color. This is an example of a tweezers top, two candles in a pattern where the price was going up where the two candles have the same high. They may not be long bodied candles. This is also 
an example of a bearish engulfing pattern. That's where the second candle, the body of the candle, completely engulfs the body of the previous candle, showing that there was a change in direction. Learning the language of candlestick charts and just observing highs and lows on a chart is the first step toward mastering the art and science of trading successfully through technical analysis. This information is so readily available from other sources that I recommend you get a book and study it. You should not proceed with trading until you have become familiar with the most common candlesticks and their meanings. Here's a popular book by Steve Nissen called The Candlestick Course which pretty much sums up all the primary candlestick patterns. Keep in mind that most of these terms used in Japanese candlesticks refer to candlestick patterns that may only occur in the stock market or markets other than Forex. Because in the Forex market the opening price of any unit of time will almost always be exactly at the closing price of the previous unit of time and in the stock market if you're looking at a daily chart the opening price of one day may not be at the closing price of the previous day and if it is at a different level it means something in the stock market that you won't see it in the forex market so keep that in mind if you study any of these books on candlesticks time frames when you're looking at charts it is essential that you always look at multiple time frames. There is no magic or rocket science involved in analyzing different time frames. It's all the same data displayed in different units of time. So get familiar with looking at multiple time frames. What does your chart look like on the daily time frame? What does it look like on the four hour or the one hour or the five minute? Go back to the longer time frame. Go down to the shorter time frame. Look at it and then realize what you're looking at. That you're looking at a magnified version of the longer term or a, a version of the longer term that's broken down into smaller units so that you can see more detail over the same period of time. The daily time frame shows what is happening inside each weekly candle. The four hour time frame shows what is happening inside each daily candle. The hourly shows what's happening inside of each four hour. So you can't see what's inside of the four hour time frame if you're looking at a four hour chart. But if you go to a shorter time frame you can see the detail of what's happening inside of that period of time. The 15 minute shows what's happening inside of each hourly candle. And the 5 minute shows what's happening inside of each 15 minute candle. But it's really all the same data. All this data is simply the price over a period of time. Here's a chart of the pound versus the US dollar on the weekly time frame. Here's the same data but displayed in daily units of time. So each of the weekly candles is divided into seven units of time instead of one. The four hour time frame is now taking the data inside of the daily time frame and breaking it down into four hour units of time. So you can see more detail in what the price did during one day. The one hour time frame here is showing you what's happening inside of each four hour candle breaking it down into four units for every one of the four hour time frame. If you go to the 15 minute you can see even more detail of what's happening right now inside of each one hour candle. And the five minute is now showing you even more detail of what's happening inside of the 15 minute candle. After you understand the language of candlesticks and bar charts when you have had a chance to read the candlestick course book, you'll want to start exploring the world of technical indicators. So when you look at a chart, you will see everything on the chart is how the price has changed over time. 
price is displayed up and down while time is displayed left to right and your chart simply shows you the change in price over time. Indicators are the various mathematical formulas that technical analysts have developed over the years to display different aspects of the market that can help you to see and understand the nature of the current action of price and what to expect next. Some of the most commonly used indicators are MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence. If you go to our website, you'll see that there is a video that explains MACD, explains what it is, how the formula was developed, and how it's used. Stochastics, another indicator that you've probably heard. It's just a formula, a mathematical formula based on price. So the data that's in this indicator is actually also in the candlesticks. It is price, but a formula is applied to it to display a visual line or graph on a chart that you can use to make your trading decisions. Moving averages. A moving average is simply the average of price over a certain number of units of time. And moving averages are very interesting because they show us the direction of price. But of course they're lagging behind price. They're showing what price is in the process of doing. If you have a short period moving average and a longer period moving average, the short period moving average will be above the longer one if price is going up. And if price is going down, it will be below the longer term moving average. That just helps to show what price is in the process of doing. Bollinger bands or standard deviation bands display a line that represents price multiplied by a certain standard deviation above and below. And we have an entire workshop later that explains more about how Bollinger Bands are used in trading. Don't become overly fascinated with using a lot of different indicators. Many traders are indicator junkies and they clutter their screens with many indicators making it difficult to clearly see what the market is really revealing. Often too many indicators are actually giving duplicate information and some traders use indicators of other indicators such as converting the conditions of one or more indicators into another indicator with a different name. Don't become addicted to using indicators that are duplicating information that you already have in some other form. Let's talk about launching your Forex trading business. If you expect to succeed in a business Without reading a book, you'll probably not succeed in any business. In order to advance and proceed on to the next workshops, you don't need to have a PhD in technical analysis, but you do need to have a demo account and know how to execute trades in your demo account and have a general understanding of Forex charts and technical analysis. If you have no previous experience in trading, what you'll want to do is to just find some books on technical analysis and get a general understanding of what charts are and what indicators are. You don't have to go real deep into technical analysis to know every detail of everything there is to know about technical analysis because I will show you in the subsequent workshops the specific things that you need to look at in order to enter and exit trades. But here's a book you might find useful, Boris Schlossberg's book, Technical Analysis of the Currency Market. This book may be somewhat useful because it's specific to the Forex market. The truth is, technical analysis is technical analysis, and it applies to any financial market. Technical Analysis for Dummies. The Four Dummies series of books are just a publishing marketing name, a brand name. Technical Analysis for Dummies is a, a pretty good general book on technical analysis. This book, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends by Robert Edwards and John McGee is a classic that has been around for a long time and has been continually updated and it contains about everything you'll ever need to know about 
analyzing financial markets using charts. Okay, here's your action steps. Open a demo account. Get charts. Learn the basics of technical analysis. Learn to trade profitably by going on to our next video workshops. Don't get hung up on this step. Some traders feel that they need to go learn everything there is to know about technical analysis before proceeding. And I'm telling you, all you need to know is how a Forex trading account works and you need to have a general familiarity with what charts are and what indicators are. You don't need to know everything there is to know about technical analysis to proceed to the next workshops and start trading successfully. Obviously there's some effort required on your part to successfully launch any business. Training and education should be an ongoing aspect of your trading business if you intend to be successful. Forex trading is a somewhat independent business that requires self-motivation and if you need someone to hold your hand and coach you every day this may not be the business for you. Again the rest is up to you. Who is responsible for your success in your trading business? You are. I look forward to having you join us in the rest of the workshops where we will focus specifically on how to consistently earn profits in the Forex market.